Oh god, I've really got to be careful not to drop this. <laughs> Welcome back to another Geekwatt video. Today I'm doing something slightly different. I'm going to be looking at this, uh, the Gigabyte 990X motherboard, and how it performs with the AMD FX 8350. And more specifically, how does the AMD 8350 stack up? So when AMD reached out to me and were like, we want you to explore and investigate how uh, this FX 8350 does in the new DirectX 12 architecture, I thought, all right, okay, fair enough. And when Gigabyte offered to send out their G1 gaming motherboard, take a review of and to use for this very purpose I thought what better excuse to, to test things out and see how things are going so let's give it a bit of context bit of background then we'll get into some benchmarks to actually see the performance differences and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of conclude it and that kind of stuff now before I start if you'd like to see my review of uh, this motherboard uh, the 990x from Gigabyte and the race cooler you can see those in the card section up there uh, now as well but let's get on to the CPU. So for the purposes of this video, I was calling uh, this CPU the AMD 8350 on the brand new AMD Wraith Cooler. And this is their brand new stock cooler that comes with selected uh, AMD CPUs and hopefully all of their new Zen CPUs when they come out later this year, early next year. And it's a really, really nice addition. It keeps the CPU nice and cool and none of these uh, gaming benchmarks were overclocked. Now, 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 now. Now, a month, about a year ago, actually, to be fair, I did a video called Should You Still Buy an FX Chip? And, and the reason I did that was because FX chips then had been out for quite a long time. And my conclusion at the end of that video was yes, you should, because they still provide a great value option. Now, it's a year later and a lot of things have changed. You've got Intel 6000 series CPUs which operate on a much smaller processing node uh, which are slightly more expensive. They, they support DDR4, all that kind of stuff. So I thought, surely this AMD FX 8350 can't still stack up to be a great value option. So let me roll you some benchmarks and stuff that I've tested out and I'll come back with the conclusion as to whether you should still buy an FX 8350 or not. So as you can see there in those Direct uh, X12 and Direct X11 games with both an Nvidia and an AMD GPU in case you were to buy in case you were to buy an Nvidia GPU with an AMD chip. Very common, it was my first system combo. And 8GB of RAM clearly provides an insane gaming performance. Even three, four years after release of this eight, these AMD 8000 series CPUs. And I think it's absolutely crazy to think that these chips have been out for so long and their longevity has maintained. And I also want to uh, cite some stream streaming as an example. Now, the 8350 has always been used for streaming for the longest time by Twitch streamers. And I thought, why? And then I got it. And it's a beast for streaming. The multi-threaded on this is amazing. Having eight physical cores instead of four hyper-threaded cores and four virtual cores is insane. It's really, really good. And I think those benchmarks just prove it justice. I don't know what more there is to talk about when it comes to this FX 8350 chip and I know this video has been slightly shorter but the fact that you can get a motherboard like this which basically uh, puts all the latest modern features onto in onto the AM, AM3 plus socket and onto the uh, the 990X and 990FX chips such as the, such as the M.2 SSD support up to 32 and 64 gigabytes of RAM better overclocking HD audio isolated audio USB 3.1 is insane and I think it just provides much more of an appealing proposition now I know what you're thinking AMD's Zen CPUs I'm gonna put this down before I before I drop it AMD's Zen CPUs are on the horizon Intel's KB Lake chips and Raw Bully chips are on the horizon but you have to remember when they release they're gonna cost more they are it's it's a fact of the matter they are because there is going to be a price premium ddr3 is dirt cheap especially compared to ddr4 not to say ddr4 hasn't come down in price significantly but it's still expensive in comparison to ddr3 you can pick up eight gigs of ddr3 ram now for like 25 quid which is like 33 dollars around about you can pick up this motherboard for 85 pounds so less than 100 dollars and get all of these new features up to 64 gigabytes of ram m.2 ssd support raid support and i think it just provides such an appealing proposition especially to any of you who are wanting something team red you want an amd chip and you just want to see and you want it you want to still be able to use that and and the fact that this chip can still still sort of perform and still compete with an i5 such as a 6500 or a 6600 or a 6600k 
is incredible and I think props have to go out to AMD for their insane efforts on this chip. Originally and the forward thinking nature of when they released these chips. Not to mention it's cooler compatibility. You've got cooler compatibility across the board. You've got all the DDR3 RAM. You can put an SLI or a Crossfire setup in there, which to me appears to remedy some of those issues that we've previously encountered. Of course, if you want DDR4 memory, of course, if you want that new ecosystem, of course, if you want support for up to Intel's highest gen CPUs for the next three, four years, then you're gonna have to go Skylake or X99. That's that's the, the fact of the matter. But if you want an AMD chip, I think it just shows that this can still stack up. I'll put those benchmarks on the screen once again for you now while I'm talking. And I think it's just insane to see the longevity of the chips and how they can still be used and still be taken advantage of so far down since the release. So yeah, if you'd like to see uh, more reviews from the channel and all that good stuff, make sure to drop a like rate. And if you did enjoy the video and liked more stuff like this, do make sure to subscribe. And as always, we'll see you in the next Geekawatt video.